Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Apple drops a new Final Cut Pro update. We're now on 10.5.4 from the more recently updated 10.5.3. This is a very minor update with bug fixes only. You can check out my previous video here and a link down in the description to see all of the new features that were brought in 10.5.3. I'm gonna go over the release notes with all of you and talk about some of the issues that were fixed. And I'm also gonna show you how you can upgrade to 10.5.4 while preserving your older version of Final Cut in the event that you need to roll back because there's issues with plugin compatibility, maybe a library has an issue after an update, whatever issues you're facing, you'll be able to roll back to an earlier version like 10.5.3. All right, so let's pull up the release notes here. So I said bug fixes. This is really just showing stability improvements. Apple tends to delineate between something that fixes a bug versus something that improves stability. So in the release notes, we can see we have improved stability when exporting with certain Mac OS language and region preferences and improved stability when playing H.264 or HEVC media. I personally wasn't experiencing any issues with this with the 10.5.3 update, but I did see in some groups and forums and on Twitter that some people were having to change their language preferences to the United States or America in order to be able to export certain videos. I didn't see a lot of instances of this, but enough on Twitter and social media that it was certainly an issue. And in the three weeks between the 10.5.3 update and the 10.5.4 update, Apple has, I think, addressed that issue with this uh, stability improvement. So with just these two line items in the release notes, this is about as minor of an update as you can get. 10.5.3 had a ton of improvements, uh, not only with features, but also with bug fixes and stability improvements. You can check out the release notes here on this website. I'll link it down below in the description where they go over um, all of the different changes. In my previous video about 10.5.3, I actually had two videos, one that talked about some of the problems that we were having, and another one that was about how you can upgrade to Final Cut without worrying about not being able to roll back to an earlier version if you're starting to have issues with some of your plugins. Something just isn't working in the new Final Cut update with your system and you need to go back to the old version. So I'm gonna cover that again in this video because this is such a minor update. I wanted to make sure I had some content that had some value to all of you. And I think going over uh, how you can upgrade to 10.5.4 while preserving rolling back to 10.5.3 or earlier can really help you. For those of you who did not do the 10.5.3 update, and are seeing only the 10.5.4, check out my 10.5.3 videos to get a better understanding of what came out in the 10.5.3 update. All right, so I've got the App Store app open and I'm not showing in my updates area that there's a Final Cut update. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search for Final Cut Pro, which you may have to do as well in order to see the update. Uh, you can see here we go to Final Cut and then this switches from open to update. I'm not gonna do the update quite yet because I need to prep some things before I do that. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to my applications folder and then I wanna scroll down to Final Cut Pro. We've got Final Cut, here we go. And then I'm gonna copy this to an external location. So I'm gonna go to my Pegasus, which is my main drive and I have a folder here called old FCP with a folder with 10.5.2. So I'm gonna call this 10.5.3 and then I'm gonna copy this over to that folder. And it's about just under four gigs, so that's gonna take a second to copy over. The reason I'm doing this again is in the event that 10.5.4 has any issues, I can essentially delete the app out of my applications folder and copy the 10.5.3 version back in. Now there's another critical step to sort of protecting your system from being locked into whatever Final Cut Pro update that you've done. I'm going to go over that in just a minute. And just a quick reminder, if you love Final Cut Pro content, tutorials, information about new releases, if you love videos about video editing, post-production workflows, click the subscribe button down below. I've got a lot of videos in my back catalog and a lot of videos coming out. I'd love it if you were to join this channel and this community. There's a lot of exciting things going on here. Click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. That's my big plug for the channel right now. Let's get back to the video. All right, so we're all copied over and you can see when I click on Final Cut Pro, we're at 10.5.3 there. So I have both of those versions preserved. So then we can go ahead and do the update and I'm going to click on it and go through that process. While this is going, I'm actually gonna to check to see if Compressor had an update. And yes, it does. Now with 
compressor and motion, I don't feel like I need to roll back to an older version personally, but if you did feel like you wanted to protect your older version of compressor, you can go to compressor here, do the same thing I did with Final Cut, copy this over to a folder on a separate drive, and then you'll preserve that version. I'm just gonna go ahead and update it anyway, because uh, compressor for me is not really used terribly extensively in day-to-day -day operations. I really just use it to make custom export settings. So I think upgrading this is gonna be fine. And then I'm gonna check motion to see if they dropped an update for that as well, which usually, usually happens when they release and looks like they did do an update. Yeah, improved stability. It doesn't really show anything different than the Final Cut Pro update. So let's go ahead and update that as well. And then I'm gonna go back to Final Cut Pro just to check on the status of that update. And we can see it's still going. All right, so Final Cut's updated. Let's just double check in Finder that we've got the correct version. I can't see anything on this tiny split. Yep, so we got 10.5.4. And then again, in our folder, we've got 10.5.3. So now what we wanna do is we wanna preserve any libraries that we are going to open uh, because it may require the library to be updated even with just an incremental update like this. So. I am going to go to my main folder here and go to my YouTube stuff. So I'm gonna do this out of my file tree template. So I have my template here and I have a Final Cut library that I use as a template. And I'm gonna copy this or duplicate it. And I'm gonna call the old one 10.5.3. And then this one's going to be for 10.5.4. Now, why do you do this? So a lot of times with Final Cut Pro updates, the library that you're working with will need to be updated by Final Cut in order to be compatible with that new version of Final Cut. If you don't copy your library before you open it and update it, you're not gonna be able to roll back to the way things were before you did the Final Cut Pro update. This, in essence, is creating a backup of your library as it was before you upgraded Final Cut Pro. If you upgrade Final Cut Pro without backing up your library and are experiencing issues with plugins, crashes, anything like that, your library is going to be stuck in that current version of Final Cut Pro. But if you copy this like I have with 10.5.3, I can go back to this library and open it up and have all the stability and everything that I had before the Final Cut Pro update came out. Now, if you did a significant amount of work in the new library before realizing that it just wasn't stable or your plugins weren't working or whatever, you're gonna lose some of that work, but at least you'll be able to access your library without any trouble. So I'm gonna double click this one and just see if Final Cut triggers an update to that library. It doesn't always do this when Final Cut updates, especially for small updates like this, but it's better to be safe than sorry. So you can see here we've got 10.5.4. We've got the what's new thing. Okay, so we do need to update our libraries to be compatible with Final Cut 10.5.4. And again, this is where you wanna be sure that you create a backup of your Final Cut library from the previous version of Final Cut that was working for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit update. So again, this Final Cut library template that I use for all of my YouTube videos so that everything is just ready to go as far as events and keywords and keyword collections and a project and all that when I start a new YouTube video, I'm actually gonna use it for this video, that's all updated to 10.5.4. But this library, again, is compatible with 10.5.3. If I open this right now with Final Cut 10.5.4, it would prompt me to update that library but I wanna keep this one as 10.5.3 in case I have any issues moving forward with stability, plug-in compatibility, et cetera. So those are the steps that you wanna take every time a Final Cut Pro update comes out. You wanna duplicate your Final Cut Pro application to just a folder on your desktop or a folder on an external drive, someplace other than the applications folder so you can preserve that older version. And then any libraries that you're working with, you wanna make sure that you copy them, duplicate them, and then label them with whatever version of Final Cut they were compatible with just so you can quickly understand what library that works with. I've had enough issues in the past when I'm working on a project where I upgrade Final Cut Pro because it has some awesome new feature I wanna use, 
but there's bugs, there's glitches, there's stability issues, some of my plugins don't work, and I need to roll back to the old version. The biggest issue that people have when they upgrade Final Cut Pro is usually plugin compatibility. So I would recommend that if you're wanting to upgrade even to 10.5.4 from 10.5.3, take a look at all of your plugin manufacturers and double check that they are compatible with 10.5.4. There's nothing more frustrating than being in the middle of a YouTube video or a client video or a film project that you're working on and certain aspects of the software, especially third-party plugins, aren't working because they haven't gotten their software updated because the Final Cut update dropped seemingly out of nowhere. They didn't know that it was coming and they weren't ready for it. So that's all I really have for this 10.5.4 update. All right, so this is video editor Matt popping into this video to say that I found another update to Final Cut Pro 10.5.4 that isn't listed in the release notes. Now in 10.5.3, we got a new block blade tool. The razor blade icon that was used with the blade tool was thrown out and replaced with a little tiny pair of scissors. Now a lot of you complained that the scissors were not sort of respecting the craft uh, in the sense that back in the day when you actually edited it on strips of film, you use the blade tool to cut the film. Now I'm not experienced enough as an editor to have gone back that far to edit with the blade tool and actual film strip I've always edited digitally. But the other complaint that we got, especially from someone like Marquez Brownlee, you guys all know him, big huge tech YouTuber who uses Final Cut Pro. He pointed out on Twitter that the little scissor icon didn't line up with the playhead or the cut point that you were trying to do. And it was very sort of visually confusing to line those things up. Well, Apple in this update, 10.5.4, change the blade tool, the little tiny pair of scissors is now oriented differently. The playhead now sort of bisects the scissor icon and the open scissors you can see here uh, are right where the cut point is. So now it finally kind of makes sense how the scissors are used to cut a piece of film. So what's cool about this is that Apple was listening to all of us. We got on Twitter, we got on social media, and we pointed out how sort of strange and odd it was that the scissor didn't align with the playhead. And in the three weeks since that update, Apple changed this tool to make it work uh, a little bit more intuitively with us video editors. So just know that if you provide feedback through Apple through the Final Cut Pro feedback option or post on social media, they are going to hear us, they are going to notice this. And something that they sort of overlooked uh, got changed within three weeks because all of us were pointing out how, how it just really wasn't working that well. So that's a pretty exciting little uh, aspect of this update that the blade tool was changed yet again to dial it in and get it working right for all of us video editors. I know some of you may still miss the old blade tool icon. I'm fine with the scissors, it's not a big deal to me, uh, but I really like it a lot better now that it's lined up with the playhead. So let's go back to the video. Now in that 10.5.3 problems video, I also talked about how export times were taking longer on my machine using 10.5.3 versus 10.5.2. I haven't been able to test anything with 10.5.4 to see if that's the same or improved. I may run those tests this week and make a video about it if I see any changes. If not, check out my social media. I'm at Matthew T. O'Brien on Twitter and on Instagram, at Midland Pictures on Instagram. Uh, and you can always check YouTube because I do post regularly there in the community tab with any information that's important but not necessarily worth producing a whole video on. I think that's gonna cover it for this 10.5.4 update. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. The best thing that you can do to support the channel is to actually watch this video in its entirety because that view duration definitely helps us with the YouTube algorithm. You can also click the like button if you like this video. It's a great way for this video to get a lot of attention from YouTube. And if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell so you get notifications every time I upload a video. That's going to be it for this Final Cut Pro video. Until the next one, I'll see you all soon. Yeah.